Uh, my name is Anne Marie Renee, and I am the founder of Belfam Inc. and the founder and CEO of Anair AMC Photography. Um, I am a photographer, producer, content creator, creator who cannot live without doing anything arts related, pretty much. It's something innate, right? And so it's always been something inside of me, and it's kind of sort of like I'm following the universe, you get me? Mm -hmm. So always loved writing movies, directing, um, putting visuals together. And so these things have kind of taken me to where I am now. I have, an, I have notebooks, I have several different notebooks. And these are the baby makers, <laughs> right? These are the notebooks that birth my ideas into um, reality. And so I just, I'm like, okay, this name, this name, this name, this name, this name. Then I finally wrote down some Crayol Takeover. And then I'm like, okay, person, I like to let things flow. You know, they say um, when you're co-creating with the universe, you're supposed to let things flow. Mm -hmm. And so I'm that kind of person. I just let everything flow. I'm like, all right, universe, speak to me. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, send me the money. That's <laughs> so, what it is. so um, I just kept writing down ideas. And um, eventually I wrote down talk show. And so instead of me launching the events first, I launched the show first. No matter who it is, um, I'll see them having, gaining opportunities from right. the events that I put on or whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, mm -hmm. it didn't, um, it, like some people look for success in like the monetary part, you get me? Mm -hmm. But seeing that, for example, it's what I'm going to leave behind. You know, it's, it's serious business. You know, sometimes some people, they get by in life and some people create the life that they want. But you really, really, really have to be able to zone in and hone in on what it is that you want exactly. It's not always going to be the same, but you just have to be willing to flow with life. But it's like surfing with the waves. You understand? How's it going, powerful people? My name is Edouard Gilles, and you're tuning in to another episode of the Unlimited Power Show. Now, this is the show where we shine light on your unlimited capability to achieve greatness. My mission in life is to inspire, motivate, and uplift people to take a holistic approach to life. And today I have the absolute pleasure of talking to Anne-Marie Renee. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thank you. This is for the official me. handshake that we do. Thank okay. you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, one thing I always say is I don't do any introduction, so I haven't mm -hmm. told uh, people who are you and what you do. Okay. So why don't you tell us what you're passionate about, what led to your passions, and okay. who are you? Okay, well, I'll start with um, who I am first. Uh, my name is Anne-Marie Renee, and I am the founder of Belfam Inc. and the founder and... CEO of Anair AMC Photography. Mm -hmm. I am a photographer, producer, content creator, creator, um, just all around uh, an artsy person who, you know, um, cannot live without doing anything arts related, pretty much. It's something that was, that's, it's something that has been like natural, how can I say it? It's something innate, right? And so it's always been something inside of me and it's kind of sort of like I'm following the universe, you get me? Mm -hmm. So um, I've always loved writing. I've always loved drawing. Always loved writing movies, directing, um, putting visuals together. And so these things have kind of, um, you know, taken me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's part of it. You know, when I was a little boy, went around in the small town of Haiti, uh, I think mom said I was kind of fresh kid, mm -hmm. but I remember I, I said I wanted to be a doctor. And I don't know why I said that. I guess I wanted to help people, mm -hmm. and it seemed like it was really cool. What did you want to be when you was a kid? Mm, well, as a kid, I didn't have one set profession that I was set on. It was more so always having a vision of being on a stage, surrounded by lights. Um, and being involved in production, being involved in the arts. Um, as a kid, I used to write songs, 
and one day I just threw away my songbook because I was like, I can't be no Beyonce. <laughs> so I threw it away and I actually regretted throwing my songbook away because I could have seen, um, you know, what I was thinking at a young age compared to now. I could have seen my progress. Mm. Um, so, yeah. You know, that's interesting. A lot of kids be like, I just want to be in recess. I want to play. I just, a lot of people don't have a, a passion early on, you know. Mm -hmm. You think that was a gift from God to you? Definitely. I've always been the kid walking around with a briefcase and never understood why. I never understood why I had the urge to create brands and businesses and logos at a young age and keep that stuff there. Um, I never understood why I always wanted to have a briefcase with me, but I'm still that person today. I'm the person that's gonna, you know, walk around looking professionally or um, anything I do, I try to do it with professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, the briefcase just represented, uh, I don't know, my business being at, a, at another level, my life being at another level, just me taking my life seriously. And it's, it's crazy that I was like that from a young age. Like, I would mm -hmm. literally steal briefcases. <laughs> Not steal them, but, like, if my parents had them, yeah. um, I'd empty them out, and I'd put all my documents in there. Like, even if it's drawings, things that I wrote down, they're going in their briefcase, and I'm going to walk around like I'm the biggest, baddest, you know what, and, you know, in wherever I am. Yeah, at a young age. Yeah. Did your parents walk around with briefcases? Um, <laughs> I can't say that they did. No, no. What did your parents do? Well, my dad, he's an accountant. And my mom has been working for a major bank. Well, she doesn't work for a major bank here, but in Haiti um, for a long time. So, yeah. So your mom's in Haiti and your dad's here? At the moment, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but she travels back and forth. So uh, how is it like not living with your mother? Uh, well, I, I can't say like I don't live with her because she's like I'm with her frequently, mm. so it's not it's not that. So big when you was a kid, like you used to always see her. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So I mean, your dad is an accountant and your mom works in business, mm -hmm. so it seemed like they're very business like folks. You, I think that was that something More with that gave to finances, you? and that's something that I'm still tackling. So I don't know, maybe they left that part. Let me not say they, that. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Just say it all. Um, yeah, but dealing with finances, so for for both of them, it's both dealing with finances and business, so, so yeah, for me, it's more so branding, business development, um, creative direction, um, graphic design, so, mm -hmm. but yeah. You know what you said that was interesting? I relate to it. It's like, I don't know why I'm like this, you know, I don't know why I was like this from a young, young age, mm -hmm. and I think that that has to do with, like, Sometimes God gives us a certain, certain, either a gift mm -hmm. or a passion or a mission. Mm -hmm. What do you think your mission is in life? Um, that has changed a few times. Um, I went from being the kid thinking that I could change the world to understanding the world and trying to change the world through my art. Mm -hmm as opposed to being um, active in politics and other things that I'm passionate about because I did want to go in the law route, um, the political science route, um, but I just decided that, you know, with the way the world is set up, I'd rather just change and shift people's lives, change and shift my life in a positive way through the arts. That way it's not really causing trouble. You, know? mm. <laughs> you ever watch you watch NBC, Fox News, all the different news networks? Mm -hmm. I don't really watch the news like that. Me neither. <laughs> I like positive stuff coming in. The right. reason why I brought that up mm -hmm. is there are a couple ways you change the world. Mm -hmm. You change the world by actively doing something like being a lawyer, impacting specific um, people's lives, you know, giving justice to them. Mm -hmm. Or you change the world through media, which mm -hmm. changed the mindset and shifts uh, the rhetoric of the politics. Right. So do you think that's something you're trying to do or that in the back of your head, I always say, sometimes we're like, okay, branding and marketing, we see what's in the forefront, our mm -hmm. gifts, but then our gifts is sometimes a vessel for our true dreams. Because you mentioned that you're, pol you're um, 
passionate about politics, right? Yes, very. So why, what, what, what is the passion that you have for politics? In what way? Um, I think I have a gift when it comes to finding solutions or creating because whatever it is that I need to do, I always have a blueprint for it. I can literally uh, create something from, I will write something down or create a diagram or um, let's say it's for a house, draw a house from start to finish. And I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, based off of the blueprint I have, that's exactly how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. But either way, like I still can build it and I know what steps to take and what the short term goals are, what the long term goals are. Mm -hmm. Because I have that ability, um, I, I tend to always try to, I, I, I tend to believe I have solutions for certain problems that we make like. uh, more, more of a problem than they need to be. Who's starting this conversation is starting a debate and it's going to bring out another Anne Marie that you weren't prepared for because I did say I was going to go to law school, right? <laughs> so I'm mm. ready to take people on <laughs> at wow. any second. So, but we're not going to do that here. Well, we're not, we're not going to go. We're, <laughs> we're not, not going to go We're not going to do that here. Right. But, um, for example, um, the high school that I attended, um, I always, how can I say this? I was always trying to have a connection with the principal. I was always bringing proposals to the principal. I'm talking about 12 page, 30 page proposal. Teachers not doing their job. The cafeteria lunch needs to be <laughs> healthier. <laughs> the school needs uniform because the kids are coming to school dressed like, you know what, you know? Um, and one of the most important things I did during high school was actually start a black history class because my high school didn't have one. Wait, you started a black history mm -hmm. class? Tell As in, I got a, I made my own petition, printed it out, and I went around to every student in the high school and if they were in favor of having a black history class, they signed their name on the petition. And I delivered it to the principal and the vice principal and they decided to bring the black history class to the high school. So. <laughs> black girl power. Thank you. Black girl magic. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. So that, that's one of the reasons why I kind of slowed down because I'm an activist at heart. So certain things will just drive me crazy if I see that there is no change or any progress. So I've had to kind of redirect that passion um, into my work, into my, my art, mm -hmm. you know, because certain issues as one person, even with an organization, you can't fix it that easily. No matter what, um, I'm not going to say no matter what, but you really, really, really have to have the funds or the legal power or, yeah, the legal power and the funds in order to make it happen, mm. you know, so... Yeah, because I could be a billionaire right now and I could want to go into Haiti and make changes, but will the actual um, people, like the, the people in the government, allow that change? You understand what I'm yeah. saying? It's like different, you have to have different keys to different doors to actually make, make moves and stuff. So right now, do you think that your passion is making the keys to open up the doors? of the future things that you want to do? Do you see that in your future and are you working towards it by doing what you do now? Do I see what in my future? This movement. Movement. Uh, getting like into politics. Politics. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> because you told me that you foregoed law school mm -hmm. because something was calling you. Yeah, my, my passion for my art. So. When are we going to get into that? The passion for your art. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like a lot of doors intentionally close on me because God is steering me towards a in specific a direction. direction. Mm -hmm. And there's also order of business. Mm -hmm. You know how you say you do effective planning? Sometimes we have our plans. Mm -hmm. They're adequate plans. Now, they're legit goals mm -hmm. set right. However, the fashion of which the ordering of the goals mm -hmm. are not in the order that God wants us to do. Right. So maybe law doesn't come first, but something else comes before. And I'll, I'll go a little bit deeper into that subject. It's like something pulling you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to listen to that. There's an order of business. You know, 
I have a lot of entrepreneurial ideas, and I believe they're game changers, mm -hmm. and they're really great. Mm -hmm. However, I felt God communicated with me that the order of achieving those needs to be rearranged. For instance, you know, if I'm going to start a tech company, right, that's going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy. Yes. And it's going to require of me to be more, you know, I guess I'm still going to use some sort of creativity, mm -hmm. but more management, analytical, getting money and getting funds. And I'm saying this because there might be a person out there that's talented but stuck. Mm -hmm. But God is rearranging the, the process, right? Mm -hmm. So I f what I found out about myself is that being younger now and having a deep message in my heart and the experiences, the gifts that came in the form of challenges, um, I should be investing that into people that are my age while I'm still young, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I decided to forego the idea of starting like a big tech company um, to getting more into the community and doing this show and getting more into speaking and writing because I feel like maybe this is the prime time that God's want me to get to this profession because I probably want, and there's some people I can't touch when I'm 30, but I could touch them now at 24. Mm. So do you feel like God is kind of like arranging uh, the structure of your life? Tell us about when you made that decision switching from law to what you're doing now. Um, that was me changing my mind about um, not wanting to pursue law or my political science degree anymore actually came, I, I was shocked myself. I was like, why am I switching, um, you know, my, my path when this is exactly what I came here for? And um, immediately when I decided to make that decision, I was like, okay, I need to look for a school that can complement me and complement my skills that need to be developed further for like cinematography, entertainment business, um, photography, um, branding, brand development, business law. Um, those are just some of the things, but that's what was pulling at me, you know? And um, I did mention that um, my photography career started my first year of college. Um, that's when I really started doing it professionally. And I, I worked for a band called Elements to Brand. Um, shout out to them. And um, I traveled with them um, and I did photography for them. So be, having access to um, the kind of people that they were performing in front of and the kind of creatives mm -hmm. and um, amazing people that use their art to heal, to empower, to inspire um, the people that, are, that were around them is what really made me decide, okay, being a lawyer, an attorney is a profession, but it's, it didn't really have the same, for me, it wouldn't really have the same impact um, compared to if I was, you know, um, pursuing my businesses and, um, how can I say this? Pursuing my businesses and using my art as a way to empower people. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would be able to reach more people. I would be able to empower more people. Um, and just the message would reach more people as opposed to just focusing on a, you know, profession. Mm. That's how I look at it. Nice. So what's the, what's the difference between impact and having impact and having a profession? What's the difference? Um, you can still have an impact while having a profession. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I don't know, especially, you know, being um, Haitian, um, your parents always want you to have backup, right? And so being an attorney always looked like backup. It never looked like um, what I would want to do for the rest of my life. Mm. So um being that it's not what i want to do for the rest of my life it's not what motivates me it's it's not what moves me i don't really think that it would have that much of an impact when i um do my talk show when i produce my talk show or i produce these events or um you know i put out the content that i i um that i produce for my social media pages the reach is beautiful because it's able to connect to people um, I had an event in March and, um, it was the first one for the From Creole Takeover brand and the responses that I got actually shocked me because they were like, 
you know, we need more stuff like this where we can just, um, you know, have a good time with um, like-minded women. Um, and people were, a lot of the women in there, there were men and women in the room, but mostly the women, they were, they were happy to just be around um, people that are doing amazing things in the community mm -hmm. and being able to network and be inspired and connect because the most important thing, the most important thing that I always see happen at my events is connections being made. Like I'll have, no matter who it is, um, I'll see them having, gaining opportunities from right. the events that I put on or whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, mm -hmm. it didn't, um, it, like some people look for success in like the monetary part, you get me? Mm -hmm. But seeing that, for example, if I had a model there and she landed a contract with mm -hmm. a designer and mm -hmm. she's now a model for that designer or she's participating in this major festival or uh, the connections is is what's important to me. That's the that's that's one of the most important important things mm. to me. Yeah. Is that <laughs> is that feeling you get yeah. a satisfaction mm -hmm. when you realize what you do matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was talking to someone. She was like, I just had a I just gave the nice presentation in front of these women to help them shift their lives, and she was like, Yeah, it was. I felt really good. Mm -hmm. She also said my pocket felt really good. <laughs> uh, but I was like, but I kept, I was like, yeah, I love the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. So what's that feeling you get when you do your show, when you have an event? How do you feel? Describe it in vivid terms. Um, I don't know if I can. It's just the feeling of satisfaction mm. um, that I get. Um, like, for example, I've had a few of... Um, the women I've interviewed, mm -hmm. they've come back and they've told me um, and the team I, I'm working with that, you know, because of the interview, it allowed them to reevaluate where they are, um, where they are in life, mm -hmm. and to set their goals higher, to to accomplish more. Um, mm -hmm. One of the ladies that I actually interviewed, she actually decided to open up her storefront after she did the interview with us yeah. and i was like congratulations That's awesome. i was like yay you know i'm not saying that the show had a direct um it, it direct effect on her actually getting the storefront but the fact that it motivated her mm -hmm. and it changed her perspective is what gives me satisfaction because that's one of the reasons why i said it's really to document these these um the the stories of these women mm -hmm. so yeah. That's powerful. We're going to get all into that very soon. <laughs> okay. You know, that's very powerful. I've had the okay. same thing happen mm -hmm. where somebody got, oh, shoot. Boom. I should do that. And then they start, let's speed it up. Let's, let's get it up after this. This is a good, let's just, let's keep that momentum mm -hmm. going. So we're, we're, we're initiators and managers. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of something that I heard that God created the earth. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Oh, this is nice. This is nice, but I need people to manage it well. Right? I need people to manage and tend and make sure the grass don't grow up too high. Make sure that the world operates. Mm -hmm. So, in a in a way, we're managers of the world. Mm -hmm. We're managers of our lives. We're managers of our destiny. Right? How have you managed to believe that you can start your own show? How, how did that come about? Um. Well. It the show actually came from an event idea because I had just finished um, the brand launch event I did for Belfam Inc. Um, back in April, um, and I kept I have an I have notebooks I have several different notebooks and these are the baby makers, <laughs> right? These are the notebooks that birth my ideas into um, reality. And so I just, I'm like, okay, this name, this name, this name, this name, this name. Then I finally wrote down Funk Girl Takeover. And then I'm like, okay, now I have a name. What am I going to do with it? And so it was eventually, it was actually supposed to um, just be an event. Um, but then ideas kept rolling, ideas kept rolling, ideas kept rolling. And I, I am the type of person, I like to let things flow. You know, they say um, when you're, co 
creating with the universe. You're supposed to let things flow. Mm -hmm. And so I'm that kind of person. I just let everything flow. I'm like, all right, universe, speak to me. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, send me the money. That's <laughs> so, what it is. So um, I just kept writing down ideas. And um, eventually I wrote down talk show. And so instead of me launching the events first, I launched the show first because the frequency, well, the, the amount of times that it would be happening would be more than the actual events itself because of what it takes to actually put an event together. So the talk show is done monthly, but mm -hmm. it's played on a weekly. Um, it's played weekly. Um, so, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, and go ahead. So you got this... It was just bestowed upon you mm -hmm. by the universe, mm -hmm. by the source, by mm -hmm. God, by this unlimited power mm -hmm. that I say. Just like this show came about, I was sitting here one day and I was doing a segment. It was a motivational thing where I make motivational videos. And I just kind of got bored talking to myself because <laughs> that's what I was doing initially. I was talking to myself and sharing mm -hmm. the message with, the, with people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I should interview people. And I had a book. That I was reading at the time it was Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. And then when I, when I looked at it, I was like, this whole book is about digging into what you already have within yourself. Mm -hmm. Then I found out that, wow, this is what I'm going to call the show. Mm -hmm. You know, I just let it flow. And then I took the steps of just getting one person to come on the show. Now, we live in a media world. Everyone and their mama got a podcast, mm -hmm. got a show, they got something going on. Or have aspirations to doing that. Mm -hmm. And in wanting to help those people get started, mm -hmm. how did exactly did you get this bar rolling? How did you find guests? How did you find a studio? How did you get people? How did you organize it? So help somebody out. Okay. Um, well, first things first, one thing I forgot to mention is the fact that the show, um, the show, the brand itself, Home Creole Takeover, um, it was birthed from the idea of wanting to create a platform for women in music. Mm. But now it's not just a platform for women in music, it's a platform for women, Haitian women, women in general. Mm -hmm. um, which is why it's called Home Creole Takeover, but our main target audience is Haitian women because there's not really a platform for Haitian women um, and I wanted to pretty much highlight the strengths of the women in the culture um, and document it um, but the show um, I started off shooting by myself with my camera I was like okay I can't record the show and be in front of the camera so mm -hmm. I asked a good friend of mine to who I work with very often to host the show because of her personality and um, the kind of person that she, the, the kind of person that she is. And um, she agreed. And um, from there, started shooting on my own. And I have a friend who owns a studio. And so I was telling him about what I was doing. And he was like, okay, I'd love to work with you on that project. And so eventually, everything just kind of came together little by little mm -hmm. um, to the point where. I'm now shooting in a studio and I have a different host and I have different guests that come on um, when we do shoot. Um, getting the guests, it's more so of figuring out who the entrepreneurs, um, artists, creatives, change makers are in the community. And from there... Um, How did you do that? Social media. <laughs> social media. Um, that's honestly... Much it. Yeah, social media because... You're not going to Google Haitian entrepreneurs or Haitian female anything. entrepreneurs well, and find a list. Well, until your website goes up. Yeah, then it was find up, it. but it's going to, you know, we're about to relaunch. So, so yeah, yes. Then you have that yes. directory of all the types of Haitian yes. women. Yes, yes, say it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so. It, it's possible. You just, as soon as the idea is conceived, mm -hmm. the universe will, you'll find a way. There's mm -hmm. something called the reticular activating system of your mind mm -hmm. and it's this little small part in the back of your head mm -hmm. and what this does is it makes you notice things you wouldn't have noticed mm -hmm. because of your attention to it it's like when you when you buy a car you buy a honda 
Mm -hmm. Then you start noticing all the hundas around, and you're like, why am I seeing all the hundas? That's your reticular activating system of the mind working. Mm -hmm. So when you start to think, I'm going to start something, Mm -hmm. what happens is your mind then looks for these things subconsciously, and you start to notice the possibilities. Right. Right? So that's why I say a lot of people, as soon as you change your focus, what you focus on will start changing. Yes, that is the absolute, that's true. That's the so, absolute truth, yes. So you found a way to really focus well by taking notes, by writing things down. Now, mm-hmm. I have a journal, mm-hmm. and this is just one, this is my favorite verse. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Mm-hmm. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Just wanted to share that verse. Mm -hmm. But I have a couple of journals. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the art of journaling for you. How important is that? How did you get that started? And what do you write in it? Uh, The future has always been important to me. Mm -hmm. Planning for the future has always been important to me. They always tell you when you want to achieve something, Mm -hmm. you write it down. The first step is to always write it down because um, anything you need to do, if you write it down, the likeliness, uh, likelihood of you Mm -hmm. achieving it is 10 times greater or yeah. whatever percentage they normally mm-hmm. use um and so i've always kept that with me um and everything i want to do i write it down um and eventually it sticks here and from there because it's always on my mind i know exactly what i need to do um how to prepare myself what road to take what people to be around what events to be at what content I need to share, how I need to look as an individual, Mm -hmm. what my mind should be like as an individual in order for me to achieve that goal. What's the, some of the, briefly, what are some of the components of your personal notebook? What do you write on it when you wake up or what do you take, what do you take notes on and how is it structured? Um, (laughs) I would say that my notebook doesn't, it does have structure to an extent, but only I understand that structure. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not, I, for one, I can tell you this, I cannot have a typical journal. I cannot have a planner because um, I don't like things being already pre-planned and organized for me. Right. I like to pretty much make my own boxes. Right, 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 right. That's me too. Make my own to-do list. I like to do my own thing by myself. And so... I have my regular notebook, it's a regular notebook, no writing on the outside, nothing, you know, no quotes on each page, even mm-hmm. though I've, I've had tons of journals like that, but I end up throwing them away. It limits you. Yeah, it's, I feel limited. So when I'm sitting in front of a blank piece of paper, I'm like, I can do anything I want with this paper. It's not already pre, uh, nothing is predestined for me. Mm. I can create what I want mm-hmm. with this paper I can ball it up I could throw it away or I can unball it up and I can decide what I'm gonna do for tomorrow or in the next 50 years interesting so journaling is super important some of the mm-hmm. most successful people in the world including us two right now I always tell my mother this we already millionaires I tell her this all the time and I mean it I'm like we're millionaires in fact mm-hmm. billionaires mm-hmm. we just don't have the money yet <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. So some of the top, the top 1%, I made a video about journaling yesterday. Mm-hmm. They, they have a journal. And one of the things that she said is, I don't like my journal being made for me. It's the same thing about life. You don't want your life written out for you. Mm-mm. When you don't have a journal, you've written out your life to mean unorganized. Mm-hmm. When you have one, it means that you're in control of the direction of what you're doing mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. And that this is the blueprint of your success. Mm-hmm or the blueprint of your failure if not acting on your ideas. Mm-hmm. So you've had that, that, that drive, that grit to just act on stuff, mm-hmm. get the petitions, get the signatures, mm-hmm. like be ambitious. Where does your mm-hmm. drive come from? During high school, the shift, the drive was making a change um, in the environment that I was in. Now I can say that my drive is to um leave a legacy and build generational wealth for my family Mm. slash future family so um 
that's the drive at the current moment. And the drive is also to um, be a successful entrepreneur because same way I don't like my journal being already completed for me, I don't like people telling me what to do. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I can have a boss. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to run my own businesses, which I'm already doing. Right. But I want them to get to the point, well, which they will mm-hmm. eventually, but I want them to be at the point where um, I can be managing my businesses and it's something that I can pretty much hand off to my children someday or mm-hmm. hand off to a family member someday and it can continue for the next 50, 100, whatever, so years. So just like Bob and Ku. You see how it's still here, mm-hmm. but the founder is no longer with us anymore. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. So, yeah. You yeah. want to get people <laughs> drunk off your art. No. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say I that. I said drunk off your art. What happened? I said drunk off your art. Drunk off of my art. Yeah. Elevated. I because mean. Because of your contribution. Yes, I do that in different ways. I do it through the photography as well. Mm-hmm. I have some pieces that people have seen and mm-hmm. they have gone viral. Wow. And when they go viral, it's not the fact that it's getting the likes and the shares it's the fact that people are commenting and the things that they're saying about the piece is what gets to me because i'm like okay i'm impacting somebody somebody uh is able to realize what black love should really look like through this picture and so stuff like that that's nice thank you so tell us about your brand how do you help people build their brand how do I help people build their brands? Well, it's something that is currently in the works, mm-hmm. but building a brand, just like I mentioned um, earlier, I have the blueprint for everything. And so um, just like I have um, you know, that pull or that drive to, to do certain things when it comes to my life, my projects, my businesses, um, if you're sitting in front of me and you have a business plan and you have um, a business that you're currently building um, and you need help to actually change the direction or steer it in the right direction so that I can be successful, I can sit in front of you and I can tell you what to do and what not to do based off of the knowledge that I have or that pull. You know, mm-hmm. you know how you're sometimes like, oh, uh-huh. red. Mm. Red because it'll attract people more. Mm-hmm. This color will, uh, have, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the power color. The power color? <laughs> Red is a power color. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true, but it's just, I don't know, there's a science to yeah, branding. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a science to it. There's more that I can get. I could, I could be more in depth, but like from logos to the mission statement to mm-hmm. the purpose to what's your target market or target audience to um, the color of your logo or your branding colors, what colors are consistent on your social media, Um, how do your graphics look, how do your videos look, Um, what message are you trying to send out to people, so based off of that, that's how you create content, that's how you know um, what to share, who to follow, who to focus on, it's it's a lot, but it's something that I love to do, it's something that I wouldn't mind doing as opposed to Excuse me, my previous passion of wanting to file paperwork and go to, you know, court, mm-hmm. defend people, not anymore, <laughs> mm-hmm. defend people through art. <laughs> so, yeah. That's dope. Thank you. You're defending the dreams. You dream through. defender. Through. <laughs> There's an actual organization, so be careful with that. There's an actual organization called Dream Defender, so shout out to them, so yeah. Yeah, I guess, you see, my brain works in wondrous ways. <laughs> it just sticks stuff together. Mm-hmm. So you've been able to stick a lot of your different components of your life into one, into finding that passion, that, that power in this. Mm-hmm. That's great. Let's say you die in 50 years. 50 years, okay. No, you die eventually, everybody dies. Right. What do you want people to say about you? Wow. Um, That's something that is actually extremely difficult for me to answer Mm -hmm. because um, a part of me is still grieving from the loss of some the the loss of someone that Mm -hmm. um, passed away very like not I'm not going to say very recently, but for me, it's still it still feels recent. Mm -hmm. And so because. I lost someone so close to me and I was like, your life could be lost just like this. Mm -hmm. Um, That is what, it's 
it's what has pushed me to make the right decisions, be around the right people, and to shift my mindset into really believing that the destiny that I want is created by me, co-created by the universe, of course, but this is why they tell you, tell the universe what you want. Mm -hmm. um, the universe listens, but um, this is what has really pushed me into believing that I can create the reality that I want. I don't believe that anybody else is creating the reality for me, um, which is why what you said, um, you shift what you're thinking into what you really want and it'll appear before you. Mm. And so, um, I don't really think about that too much. Right, so it's a different question for, it's a difficult question for me to answer, mostly because I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on what I plan to manifest. Mm, actually creating a legacy. What I plan to build before that happens. So I would love to answer that for you. Mm, you already did. <laughs> but that's, that's what I, that's what I want to keep my focus on as opposed to thinking about that mm. you know because the most important thing is to it's it's what i'm going to leave behind compared to um you know what the person um the person was my grandmother mm. but um i always think about what she could have left behind if she had had certain resources or if she had done things a little differently but you know when people pass away, you don't really want to discuss those things because right. those are all what ifs. They're no longer, you're no longer able to answer those questions. And so the drive that I have now, it's not only, it's a part of it is also um, living so that she can live through me. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because she was the closest, even though I have my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. She was the closest thing to me. And so part of the reason why I also created my photography business as well, um, and I decided to do it professionally, is because of her. And um, she passed from cancer, mm -hmm. from ovarian cancer. And I said that, um, you know, she's not going to be here with me someday. And so I am her first grandchild. And it is absolutely necessary for me to create something for the family, for myself, something that I can leave behind because life isn't all about fun and games. You know, it's, it's serious business. You know, sometimes some people, they get by in life and some people create the life that they want, but you really, really, really have to be able to zone in and hone in on what it is that you want exactly. It's not always gonna be the same but you just have to be willing to flow with life but it's like surfing with the waves you understand mm. there's a little you know um the waves kind of try to direct you sometimes but you have to be able to keep surfing and keep pushing so that's one of the reasons why i don't really have an answer to that question because you already you answered you <laughs> answered <laughs> i did i don't know because i was you expecting answered in a way you definitely mm. gave a insightful answer and the question says the answer that you gave is live your life so that when you die your life would have been good enough great enough impactful enough that it mattered yes <laughs> in other words in other words <laughs> you know that's just a right. summary from myself mm -hmm. personal development how do you grow what do you do what resources do you use um, it's been something that's very important to me for the last few months because of what took place. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, I went from being in, I don't want to, I don't want to say a dark place, but I went from being in a, in a place where I saw that life was stagnant and mm -hmm. not really moving the way, I, it's like everything was on pause. Right as opposed to now, everything is moving again. Everything is flowing. Everything is in divine order. If you're doing what you're supposed to do with the universe to actually get what you want, manifest the life that you want. So um, it's an internal battle with yourself. You have to really realize that sometimes um, obstacles they're not things that you can get rid of immediately. Sometimes you have to go through 
those obstacles um, in order for you to become another person, become the person that you're meant to become, reach another level of your career, your life, you as an individual, um, projects, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You have to, it's like a storm. The storm has to do what it needs to do. And um, let's say it was a fire. If the fire happened, we don't know how the fire happened. If everything has to burn down, everything has to burn down so that everything can regrow again and be something more beautiful than we ever expected it to be. So, um, but growth is, it's an internal battle. It's, I, I don't wanna, it's, I don't wanna call it a battle, but it's something that we all deal with on a daily basis, mm -hmm. trying to grow as individuals and trying to really be who it is we're meant to be in life. Um, but again, everything, everything comes in phases because you're meant to age. Not everything a 70 year old knows you're gonna know unless they're willing to share that knowledge with you. You understand? Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's something that you really have to take your time with. You have to be willing to be okay with taking the time to go through those obstacles and go through those failures or whatever it, whatever it is in order for you to see yourself and see your life in a different light. Mm. So, yeah. Would that be your final message? What would be your final message? You are the creator of your destiny. Um, anything you want to manifest in life is absolutely possible. You just have to um, pretty much trick yourself into not believing that everything is happening outside. Everything is really internal. Whatever you create on the inside is what is going to reflect on the outside. And, um, and from there, as long as you are setting important goals for yourself and actually being clear about what it is you want for your life, you can have it. I absolutely believe that you can have it. Freedom. Thank you. Thank how, you. How, do you how do people connect with you? Um, well, I have um, my different social media pages. I have Belfam Inc. Um, for the company, of course, and you can also find links to Fum Creole Takeover on there as well for the talk show and any other upcoming events that will be happening. Um, Miss Anair AMC is my personal page. Um, I call it Miss Anair AMC because Anair AMC is my photography company. Mm -hmm. And Anair AMC Photography for my photography company. And those are the three. All right, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your unlimited power. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Stunning conversation. Well, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in to the Unlimited Power Show, where we shine light on your unlimited capability to achieve greatness by sharing the stories of those who are using that power to actively create their lives, create their dreams, and achieve their goals every single day. Now, if you don't get anything from this show, I want you to realize that it doesn't matter what you do, you just have to have a drive. You have to have a vision, a mission, a goal, and you have to be focused and enthused to make it happen every day because it's happening. We're actively creating our dream. Just as I am right now, and just as Anne-Marie just told you she is, and is doing it, living in it. It's not a destiny, it's not a destination, it's an actualization. And with that being said, you have the unlimited power in you to achieve whatever it is that you want. But first, you must believe it in order to achieve it. Or else the world will forever miss your talents, your gifts, and all the great things that you have to offer. Please be sure to tune into this show every Tuesdays at 4, Fridays at 5 on the Island TV network. And follow us at Unlimited Power Show. Follow me at CEO Ambitions. And with that being said, have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Hey guys, it's Anne Marie. Make sure to watch my episode coming up with the Unlimited Power Show on Island TV on Tuesdays at 4 and Friday at 5.